Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Dental Discussions with Dr. Shanaz. The topic for today's discussion is gummy smile or excessive gingival display. So first, what is excessive gingival display? During smile, a gingival display of 0 to 2 mm is considered to be normal. Anything more than 0 to 2 mm of gingival display is considered to be an excessive gingival display. To assess what is the etiology for this gummy smile, we need to first assess the incisive display at rest. Is it increased or is it normal? The normal incisal display at rest is again 0 to 2 mm. Anything beyond this is considered to be an increased incisal display during rest. To first assess this, we need to make sure the lips are completely at rest. Patients when they have a short upper lip or when the maxilla is descended or there is an extrusion of incisors, they tend to have difficulty closing their upper and lower lip. In such cases, they tend to overclose the lower lip, which causes puckering of the chin, gorb, gorb, gorb appearance, that is due to a hyperactive mentalis activity. In such cases, what we do is that we massage the chin area, relax the mentalis muscle, ask them to relax the lower lip and then assess for the resting lip position and then we assess how much incisor is shown during this rest. Most often, it is increased in gummy smile patients. Then we need to know why is there an increased incisor display in such gummy smile patients. It can be either because of a short upper lip or it can be an incisor descent of the incisors. To assess what the etiology for this excessive incisor display is, first thing which we need to assess is the lip length. How to assess the lip length? So, Assume that this is the upper lip, this is the lower lip, this is the excessive incisal display and this to be the nose. The junction between the columella or philtrum and this point is called as the SN point to the lowermost position of the upper lip is measured. This is what we call as the lip length. It is 20 to 22 millimeter in young adult females and 22 to 24 millimeter in young adult males. We can either measure with an assess that whether is it having a shorter lip length or not. Or what else we can do is we can draw a parallel line similar to this. Assess the distance between this line to the corner of the mouth and again the lip length from the SN to the lowermost position of the upper lip. This three length is supposed to be equal. In case this length is shorter than this other two length, we can call it as a short upper lip. So, when we diagnose the patient with a short upper lip, the treatment for such an etiology of short upper lip is lip lengthening surgery. The details of the such surgery will be discussed in later videos. Another option is that the patient has a normal lip length. In such case, as I told you before, it is the incisor which has descended down. It can either be the incisor dentally extruded as in here or it can be the entire maxilla which is descended down. What we call as vertical maxillary excess or VM. How to differentiate between the dental and skeletal prop? Here that is the incisor extrusion or the entire maxilla descending down. For that we need to look at the occlusal plate. If there is a difference between the anterior and posterior of occlusional plane or there is a step between the anteriors and posteriors, it is the dentition, anteriors which has extruded and such an extrusion need to be corrected using orthodontic intrusion. There are various intrusion mechanics for this, 2x4 appliance using tax, temporary anchorage devices or different mechanics which can be used. If there is an harmonious occlusional plane between the anterior and posterior, both anterior and posterior have descended down or the maxilla itself has descended down which we call as vertical maxillary excess and such an etiology need to be treated with surgery, orthognatic surgery or V41 surgery with superior repositioning of the maxilla. 
So, in short, summarizing this portion again. So, if there is an increased incisal display at rest along with the gummy smile, it can be either because of the lips, short upper lip, or because of the descent of the incisors, which can be skeletal or dental. Dental one treated by orthodontic intrusion, skeletal one treated with surgery, and the lip length problem treated with lip length and surgery. So, what happens when there is a normal incisor display at rest? So, when there is a normal incisor display, we need to look for the crown length. It can be either short or the normal crown length. If there is a normal crown length along with normal incisor display and a gummy smile, it means that the problem is muscular in nature. There are hyperactive upper limb which need to be treated with a Botox injection. We need to reduce the hyperactivity of the upper limb which can be done successfully by using Botox injections. On the other hand, if there is a short crown length, it can be either because there is the crown itself has reduced in length by attrition or the gingiva has come down or gingival hyperplasia has occurred. How do we differentiate this? We need to look for attritional patients. If there is an attrition present, it is the incisor extrusion, which is treated as previously with incisor intrusion with an addition of prosthodontic restoration for the attrition. If there is no attrition present, it is more likely the problem is gingival in nature where the treatment is gingivectomy or any of the other periodontal surgeries like gingival apicary, prepositioning, flap which need to be done. So, here we have summarized all the various etiologies and different treatment plan. I will be discussing each of these topics in more details like the intrusion mechanics, the preparation for the surgery, how to do lip lengthening surgery, the procedure for this gingivectomy using scalpel or laser, details of the Botox injection procedures each in a different video. Please like and subscribe my video to motivate me to make such further videos. Thank you.